Lisa, I'm Becky Want. It's ten past three. And, uh, well, you know me and cooking. I mean, I make no bones about the fact that I can't and won't. And, well, if I can get out of doing it, then I do get out of doing it. But Dale Pinnock is here. He's not just a top nutritionist. He's a medical herbalist as well. And he is a medicinal cook. What on earth do all these things <laughs> mean? We're about to find out. I, I'm assuming this means that you blend cooking with science to make tasty medicine absolutely yeah yeah did you, you like that no right on the head there yeah that's fantastic <laughs> so you can go now we've sorted out <laughs> that's it yeah <laughs> bye so w t tell me about your background first of all okay well i trained in um, both nutrition and in herbal medicine i've always had an interest in the ability of food to have you know quite a healing quality on our body um and it was during my study of herbal medicine where I was studying kind of plant biochemistry and how this interacts with human physiology that I started to realise that a lot of the kind of active chemicals that you find in the medicinal plants that make them medicinal are also present in normal day-to-day -day foods like from what? culinary plants. So, I mean, let's use ginger as a prime example. There's, um, there's essential oils in ginger, the thing that give it that real spicy, zingy sort of flavour and aroma. That's a natu natural anti-inflammatory. It actually helps to inhibit certain elements of the inflammatory response. So it has a two-pronged attack, if you like, then. Mm. The Absolutely. ginger in that case. So you look at food, then, as a medicine. Is that right? Yeah, I don't think there's much of a separation, really. So, so give me some more examples of the properties of different foods. All oh, right, okay. Well, I've got a little dish for you to try as well, so I can go into some of those. But <laughs> he's got, he's bought me soup. You've got to do it now. I know, I know. Well, I will. I will. Yeah. Okay. Well, one of one of the most well-known ones has to be garlic. Mm. I mean, we're always hearing about how good garlic is for like our heart and circulatory system, things like that. There's a chemical in garlic called aoine, which actually helps to reduce blood clotting. So it offers some protection against, you know, stroke, heart attack, that kind of thing. There's also compounds in there that help to reduce the level of LDL cholesterol. You know, it's just another example. Chili. Chili is fantastic um, as a circulatory stimulant, good for, like, cold fingers and toes, temporarily lowering blood pressure as well. Well, you say that. It's good for circulation, for mm -hmm. example, chili. But how much chili do you have to take? Not a lot. I mean, I don't know whether you've had the experience when you've eaten, like, yeah. quite hot food and all of a sudden you get very, very flushed and almost feel yourself breaking out into a sweat. That's it in action. That's your blood vessels widening. It's the actual chemical responsible for that. It's something called capsaicin. That's a very, very, very powerful chemical, and you really don't need a lot of it. So let's go on to the medicinal cook side yes. of what you do. So presumably you come up with all kinds of recipes that include all these... Mm, yeah. Mm, like, <laughs> go on. Mm. So go on, tell me, tell me about... Give me a recipe. Give me a recipe. Would you like to taste one? Would you like to get... Yes, yeah? I'd love to. <laughs> Oh, I love soup. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, the, this this thing I've got here, this is a spicy red lentil and coconut soup. This has been... Spicy red lentil and coconut and soup. And coconut soup, yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you like Thai food? Yes, I do. You do? Yeah. Well, it's got a lot of those kind of flavours in there. If I pass that to you, that little, that little pot you. there. Got it. Okay, this recipe has been designed to support heart health. Okay, so we spoke about um, garlic and chilli and the impact that they have on, on heart health. Red lentils. Red lentils have got a lot of soluble fibre in there. There's a certain soluble fibre that can actually bind to cholesterol and carry it out of the body. I have to say, that is gorgeous. And I would be very honest and say, and, and, and I, I pull my nose up because I don't actually yeah. like soup. Have you ever met anyone that doesn't <laughs> like soup? But it's thick, actually. It's almost like a, mm. it's almost like a curry. It's like it's a gorgeous, Thai, isn't it's like it? a Thai yeah. green curry, and I yeah. love that. And that is absolutely delicious. Fantastic. Now, did that take a huge amount of preparation, cooking? That is a one-pot wonder. That's really easy. You just start off with, like, half a red onion chopped up, clove of garlic, um, one fresh chilli, with like a little bit of coconut oil, cook it down in the coconut oil, then throw in about 125 grams of red lentils, um, half a can of coconut milk and a bit of stock and just let it simmer away. Oh, and um, half a stick of lemongrass as well. Absolutely. I have to tell you, that's absolutely gorgeous. More from our medicinal cook, stroke medical herbalist, stroke nutritionist, Dale Pinnock, my first guest this afternoon after MP. In heaven, Dale Pinnock is here this afternoon with me. He's a nutritionist, a medical herbalist and a medicinal cook. He cooked a most gorgeous sort of Thai-based soup, and I've had second helpings, actually. <laughs> That's how lovely it was. Fantastic. But your message is, eating healthily doesn't have to be boring or expensive. Exactly, yeah. I mean, you know, with some of the clients that I work with, whenever I talk to people about eating healthily, I always get the same answers. Oh, it's too expensive. I can't afford to do that. Oh, it's really difficult to cook. It's difficult to prepare. It's bland. 
Mm. All of those things, complete and utterly false. But, the, you know, when you go, if you were, not that you would, go to a supermarket mm. and buy, for example, low-fat products, yes. they are bland and they those are Those kind of things are. But I think if you actually get into the kitchen, get creative and start experimenting with things yourself, you'll be amazed what you can create out of those ingredients. I mean, we, we, we listen to a lot of cooks. We, we hear mm. a lot of nutritionists. What are you telling us that we haven't heard before? I think it's the medicinal side. I think, um, you know, food is more than just a source of fuel with like a few nutrients thrown in. Food can actually be some of your best medicine. And if you can create something that tastes delicious as well mm. and use that, consume that alongside your regular kind of treatment, how much better can life get? You can eat yourself back to health. <laughs> You're a good salesman, I have to say. I'm sitting here believing you and almost going back into the kitchen when I get home tonight. Almost. Um, so, so give me some key messages. I mean, we've talked about garlic, we've talked mm. about chilli, and we've talked about ginger. But if I was to kind of include five ingredients from now on in, in my cooking, that would be very, very beneficial to me, wow. what, would, what would they be? I mean, that, I mean, that's really, really, it's very hard to put it down to five, but I'll tell you my top five, mm. the ones that I like. Beetroot, absolutely fantastic. That purple pigment in beetroot, something called beta cyanin, that's really, really good for the health of the liver. Really helps certain liver functions to kind of do their thing more effectively. Oh, good. Also, it's very, very good for regulating blood pressure because it's very high in nitrite, which the body converts into nitric oxide, which widens the blood vessels, takes the blood pressure down. I've, I've given simple. myself a big tick because I eat loads of beetroot, good, good. actually, so that's good. So that's one. Mm. Artichoke is another one really fantastic for regulating digestive health if your digestive system's working well everything else is going to start working a lot better because you're absorbing more mm. um ginger and garlic uh, just like <laughs> dominate my diet especially the garlic you know i probably probably smell like a polecat to all and sundry <laughs> but i eat loads of it really really good stuff not only is it good for the cardiovascular system in the way i discussed earlier also good for the immune system as well because you've got those pungent essential oils those things that actually give it its strong smell they're removed from the body via the breath, so it actually helps to protect you against things like colds and viruses sort of point as well. Any, any more for any more? There's so many. There's so many. I mean, you, you can, you know, fill tomes with it. But they're, they're some of my favourites. OK. But and I mean, you've not got a cookery book out, a recipe book out yet, but that presumably is that's, to come. That's coming in the end of April next year, yeah. And you've got a DVD coming out? There's a DVD out in the minute um, called Beat Arthritis Naturally. There's another one coming out called Eating for a Healthy Heart in September. Oh, so Beat Arthritis Naturally. Yes. So what's the key to that then? Well, that's really just looking at natural ways to manage um, like the inflammatory response in the body. So there's lots of dishes that are designed to target inflammation. Then there's um, discussion about certain supplements. So that, that things would be that ginger will then? There's, there's, there's some ginger in there mm. and celery. You might think celery is the most innocuous, yes. boring food on the planet. actually works as a natural painkiller. There's something in there called 3MB, 3M-butylphalide. It actually temporarily can dampen down certain pain signals. It's not as strong as taking a painkiller. I'm not going to pretend that it is. But it's the kind of thing that you can uh, use alongside other treatments to actually kind of support that. You see, the problem is, just, just before you go, the yeah, problem sure. is that we, we open a, a national newspaper every other day and there mm. is a, a story about... Um, no, I mean, you know... It can go either way, but there's yeah. very often a story about these kind of natural remedies that yes. are completely useless, a complete waste of money, and don't bother. Yeah, and then, then, you're, then you'll see the opposite mm, end of the spectrum. Yeah. It says they're fantastic. Well, I mean, I guess an important message is we all know people have spin. We all know that, like, you know, you say the right things, you can get any spin on anything printed any way you want. Um, uh, there, you know, there is a lot of evidence to support some natural remedies. There's a lot of things said within the natural products industry that I think is a complete and utter load of rubbish, and it makes me cringe when I see it. I think we need to definitely take a balanced approach to, you know, how we view any kind of healthcare, really. Very good to see you this afternoon. It's a pleasure. Thank you for my late lunch. <laughs> that was absolutely delicious. Dale Pinnock, and I'm sure we'll be seeing and hearing far more of you. And Liz